Praise the Lord. It's good to be here this morning. Our overhead uh, projector quit. Oh, yeah, it's just not working. So this morning you have to grab a hymn book. And uh, going to start out this morning turning number 69. stand this morning since it's standing on the premises. Most people are content to sit on the premises instead of standing on the premises.
Well, let's let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning that we could come to you and bring our requests. Lord, you are the almighty healer. And Lord, these are friends are are having a hard time. We pray, Lord, for Rick that you would touch him. Lord, you know all the physical problems he's going through. And Lord, it just doesn't look good. But you are almighty. And we pray you would touch him with your healing hand this morning. And Lord, you would be the restorer. God, just touch him in Jesus' name. We pray also, Lord, for for uh, Gloria. Lord, you know what's going on with her too. And Lord, God, we just pray in Jesus' name that you would reach down your hand upon her this morning. And Father, we just pray that you would work a miracle. And Lord, that you would touch her right now. And Lord, may she sense your very presence right now this morning. And Lord, we pray for Einar and Carol. Lord, you know the struggle. God, we pray in Jesus' name. Just touch Einar, Lord. Just remove those, all those cancer cells that have spread through his body. Lord, we just rebuke them in Jesus' name. We ask your healing power to come upon him. Lord, we know the day is going to come when he will step into your presence, as we all will. But God, we just don't like to see him go right now. And we ask that you work a miracle, and Lord, that you would just uphold Carol too. Lord, she's just getting so tired. God, we pray you would lift, just lift the burden from her shoulders and grant her rest. Help her to sleep. Lord, you just work out all the details of it. We just commit her to you as well. Father, we just thank you this morning we can be together here. And Lord, we pray that you would just work a mighty miracle today. And God, that you would just speak to us through the word today. And Lord, may our fellowship together lift each other up and strengthen each other in the name of Jesus. We pray for our country. Lord, you know all the problems that we are facing today. Lord, with the inflation, so many are just really struggling. God, we pray that most of all, that there will be a revival that will break out and sweep our land. Lord, that there will be many that will call upon the name of the Lord and be saved. And Lord, save our nation. Father, we just give you praise that we can bring our request to you. And we just rest today in Jesus' name. And we give you the praise. Amen. 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 In the book of Philippians, the scripture is Philippians 4, verses 4 through 8. It says, Rejoice in the Lord all the way again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are, are good, a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen.
the Lord this morning, right? Put on the garment the praise for the spirit of heaviness lift out your voice to God praise with the spirit and understanding oh, verify the fifteen. Let's do, we'll do it again, number 15 in your chorus book. Sorry, we're so used to having you over there. That, uh, Get to, to, all right, we'll do it starting over again. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Lift up your voice to God. Praise with the spirit and understanding. Oh, magnify the Lord. All ye that mourn. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. 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 Great
lift up the banner, let the anthem ring. Praises to our King. Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Great and mighty is He. Number 27, number 27, his name is wonderful. 27, his name is wonderful, his name is wonderful, his name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages, almighty God. Is he to you this morning and praise you. But Lord, when we are sick, you're our health. When we are down, Lord, you're our joy. You're everything that we need. And so we come to you this morning with praise in our hearts because we have a hope that hope is in Jesus. And Lord, we look forward to the day we will see you face to face. Lord, we praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, uh, as far as the announcements coming up uh, this week, our telecast is Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock in Garden Valley Cable. And then it'll be out over YouTube uh, sometime 
hopefully on Monday or Tuesday. And, uh, and to find that, just go to gosen-church.com. We have business cards in there, by the way. We want to welcome our visitors here this morning. Good having you here. And uh, also uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday night, uh, we have Bible study over at Sharon's uh, place on at 6.30 Wednesday night. And this is getting interesting because this week we're going to be studying Ezekiel 38. And that's it's a mighty powerful scripture. Look, you look at what's going on in the world today. It just fits right in. And then, uh, then next Sunday again, we have our Sunday school again, 9.30, worship at 11. And next Sunday night, we have Bended Knee here. That's at 7 o'clock. And, uh, and so it's going to be a, a great, a great uh, concert next Sunday night. We just praise the Lord that we can do this. And so next Sunday at 7. And we have posters in the back. And uh, so you can pick them up and we can get them advertising out. We'd like to have a full house. Uh, no one can do it for many, many years. And uh, in fact... We got together with him and, and uh, family, and I did their first recording way back. And we made them on the cassettes, and that goes back a long time ago. And, uh, and it's just fun to you know, work with people and see them progress and see what God does over a period of years. And, uh, and so anyway, they'll be here next Sunday night at 7. Anything else that we need to mention this morning that uh, is coming up? I, uh, I'm going to do a new song. I'm going to try and do a new song. And I just wrote this a couple days ago. So uh, it was, uh, you know, so many people are really down. And they're living in fear over the things that are happening in the world today. And I was sitting in my my living room, and I was just thinking about that. The, you know, the calls I get, and the people I talk to, and those that we talk to people at the fair, you know, and I talked to so many at the fair. It was a wonderful time. And we hear this, so many of the same things. The world is falling apart. And just so afraid. Yeah, life is kind of tough here. But the thing is, we've got a hope that is sure. And uh, you just can't visit him yet. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen in this church. Little ones, they just have fun here, make themselves at home. But anyway, I was, I was thinking about this, and, and uh, this world is not a not good by right then but there's coming a day that's called but on the other side life down here is not always easy we hear reasons to fear each day wickedness gets worse by the moment we cry, the Lord, please carry us away. But on the other side, there's joy beyond measure. On the other side, there's peace evermore. On the other side, God's glory surrounds us. We will dwell with the Lord 
It's just depressing. And you don't know what's truth anyway. So we go to the real truth, and that's the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. But well, let's pray. Father, we ask you to open our eyes to the Word this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are here. And you have a message for us, a message of hope, a message of peace. And so, Lord, we ask that you would speak to our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture I want to take you to this morning is in the book of Colossians, the third chapter. And uh, normally we have the scripture up on the, on the overhead, and uh, that's not working, so uh, sorry about that. But Colossians 3.15, it starts out, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I like that. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. That is not a fleeting thing. Well, I've got peace right now. Tomorrow I'm going to fall apart. But let it rule in your heart. And, uh, and he goes on and he says that to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Last night, 
I uh, met with my high school graduating class. And uh, we all got together to see who got the oldest. And, uh, <laughs> and we've been, it was 60 years ago I graduated from high school. And, uh, you know, and, and we were visiting, you know, with these, uh, my class, you know, and it's a whole lot smaller now than it used to be. But I heard something from a couple of different ones that said this, I am so thankful that I still have the health that I enjoy today. And it's so easy to take things for granted, the things that we can enjoy. You know, this morning you came out and you saw the sunshine, and you say, well, praise the Lord, the sun is shining. I had something I had a hard time thanking the Lord for this morning. It happened just as the sun was making its appearance. A pesky fly landed on my face. I was not anxious to wake up at that time. So I gently put him to sleep. But then I could. <laughs> but in all things, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. And uh, so I got out of bed. And uh, it wasn't too long that I got a very important phone call. And had a very good time of prayer on the phone. God knows everything. And, uh, but the word says the Apostle Paul, you know, he, Paul went through so many hard things. The struggles he went through as he was trying to serve faithfully. And, you know, I, I've heard this so many times, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, something even more important, why do bad things happen to God's people? We are lives, we are in a war zone. The devil is out to seek to uh, steal, to kill, to destroy. And so remember that we're in a war zone, but we are not destined to remain forever here. When the battles come against us, we can do two things. We can either sit there and say, God, where are you? And get angry with him. Or we can say, Lord, I'm going through a battle, but use this to teach me greater things. That I may be closer to you than I was yesterday. And we can prosper through our struggles. And then he goes on, verse 16. And, and this was the key scripture that the Lord put on my heart. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Goes on, and whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do ye all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Have you ever heard someone make this statement? What were you thinking? <laughs> tend to say that to our kids once in a while. And they, <laughs> when they make some blunder, you know, doing something stupid, of course, your kids never do anything stupid. But, uh, a lot of times, you know, we do things that we should we know better. And we say to our kids, what were you thinking when you did that? I don't know. <laughs> what are you thinking? Where does your mind dwell? You know, we can allow our minds to just float here and there, and that gets us into trouble. But like the scripture we, let, we read earlier, it says that whatsoever things, you know, it goes on and tells of things we should be focusing our mind upon. That is the very thing that will dictate to you and decide whether or not your day is going to be prosperous or it's going to be a problem. 
What are you meditating on? The scripture says that the psalmist prayed, he said that the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh Lord. Do you notice it's a whole lot easier to go to sleep at night when you are meditating on the Lord than when you are thinking about somebody that cut you off in traffic? Or doing some crazy thing. But it takes the discipline of the mind. In fact, Paul, uh, other, in the scripture, he says, Let the mind of Christ be in you. Who thought himself of no reputation. He, he came down, took on the form of man, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And Paul says, Let that mind be in you. This is a positive mind. This is the mind that is drawing closer and closer to Jesus Christ being like him. And this should be the mind of all God's people to be seeking every day to walk closer and closer to Jesus. You know, this morning, I was downstairs just ready, to, just ready to start coming up here and Jeremy's about to start Sunday school. I heard a little girl come. And so I came up here and little Cassandra was sitting up there and she was kind of sobbing a little bit. And uh, she saw Grandpa and she came up. Climbed up in my arms, wrapped her arms around my neck and snuggled really close and let Grandpa tell her how much he loved her. And she was happy then. But that comes from a relationship. I spend a lot of time with these kids, snuggling with them, holding them. And when we do that, we're building a relationship that is full of trust. What God wants from us is that kind of relationship. When anything scary comes, we can run into Him and snuggle with Him. But how many, how many people look at God as being someone so far away and so big and so scary that he's just too busy for us. But God loves us and he knows you by name. He counts every hair on your head, as we mentioned last week. He knows everything about you and still he comes, he, he draws us to himself. So that there's nothing, there's no reason why we don't dare come to him with our needs. Next weekend, we're bringing in the, our tombstone, putting it up here on my wife's grave. And on that stone is going to be is written, personal friends of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, that's what we need to be. Have that kind of a love relationship with Jesus Christ, that he's our personal friend, the friend that sticks closer than a brother, the friend that we can go to at any time, day and night, the, the friend we know is always listening for the sound of our voice. That's what God wants from us. But most people may go to church, but they have never come to that place of a true friendship with Jesus. And that comes when we realize what our need is. That we can't save ourselves. We need God's forgiveness because we fail Him. And so we come to Him and ask Him to become our Savior and our Lord, uh, the, the one who cleanses us from all unrighteousness. And we put our faith and trust in Him. 
For salvation, that is the beginning of the relationship. Many years ago, I've told this story to our people. I've told every story. In 30 years, you tell everything leastways. And uh, about many years ago, there was a, we were out in the state of Montana. And we were doing a crusade in this high school auditorium. And when the service ended, it was the last night of the crusade. And as things were coming to a close, I gave the invitation and different ones came up for prayer. And there was a man and his wife that sat there in the front. And uh, the man turns to his wife and he says, uh, Dear, the service is over. Don't you think we should leave now? And she says, In a little bit. I'm not ready to go yet. So he sat there and waited. And I was praying with this one over here. And I got done with that one. I went over and prayed with another one over there. And he looks at his wife and he says, uh, People are leaving. Don't you think we should too? I'm not quite ready yet, she said. And uh, this went on for a while, and as I was praying with different ones until I prayed for everybody that had come forward. And then I walked up to this fella, and, and uh, his name is Ernie. I walked up to him and I said, Ernie, have you ever given your heart to Jesus Christ and asked him to be your savior? He says, no. I said, do you want to? He said, I, I, I can't. I said, what do you mean you can't? He said, because I'd be a hypocrite if I did. I said, why would you be a hypocrite? Asking Christ to come into your heart. And he said, be, because he said, how can I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be my Savior if I don't love him? I said, Ernie, tell me something. When did you fall in love with your wife? Before you met her or afterwards? I, well, afterwards, of course. I said, Ernie, how can you fall in love with Jesus if you've never met him? He looked at me and all of a sudden a light came on, you know. He said, I've waited for 20 years for somebody to tell me that. And I said, do you want to meet him? He says, yes. And right there. We began to pray, and as we're praying, and Ernie is giving his heart to Jesus, his kids are with a bunch of other people in the back of the auditorium. I heard his kids yelling, He's doing it! He's doing it! And that day, Ernie started a whole new life. He met Jesus. And that's where this whole thing begins. You see, we talk about the loving Jesus. We talk about being that he's our best friend. We talk about that relationship, but it has to start with meeting him. It has to start with inviting him into your life. And that start before Ernie that night totally changed his life. It wasn't too long we came back out there and we always stopped to visit Ernie. He and his wife always made us popcorn. <laughs> and we'd sit and we'd talk and have a good time, but it wasn't long until Ernie was one of the, one of the board members of his church. He went right up, just, and it opened the door to realize what is available? We've been hearing the testimony of people, hearing them talking about loving Jesus and everything, and he could not stir up an emotion. And so he just kept walking away. But after he learned 
that it's all in first is coming to meet Jesus. And it all started perhaps today you're watching by television. And you've never met Jesus. You've been religious, you go to church, but you've never gotten on your knees before him and asked him to come into your life. It all starts there. And then from there, you develop the relationship that others have been talking about. And then the peace that passes all understanding shall be and abide in your heart and mind in Christ Jesus because now you knew that Christ has come into your heart. Now you can walk with him. Now you know he's right beside you and he's leading you and he's, your becoming, he's become your friend. Now you're not afraid because you've got God at your side. Your future is in him. When he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, it is spending time in God's word and realizing this is a love letter from heaven. And wow, this is exciting. You know, talking about love letters, my mom and dad were married many, many years. And when uh, my mom finally went home to be with the Lord, my dad was in his 90s at that point. And one day I came walking into the house and he was sitting there and in his hand he had a bunch of letters. I asked him, I said, what are you reading? And he showed them to me. He said, these are love letters that my mom had sent to him before they were married. He said, I've kept it all these years. And he read them and he just loved reading those words that she had written to him so many years ago. He loved her then, but his love grew over the years. God's word should be the love letters that we feast our heart in. This is not a flippant thing. And what I've told people over the years is this. I, they've asked me, well, how much do I read? It's not how much you read. Start reading your Bible. And when you come to something that speaks to your heart, stop right there and read it again and again and again until it becomes a part of your thinking. And, and, and when you start find, finding in the scriptures your answer for the problem today, it becomes a wonderful experience. Because perhaps you're going through a financial dilemma and you're reading your scripture and it says, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hey, that's a promise. God says he's going to do it. You can underline it or use a, use a highlighter in your Bible or you can write it out on a note card and post it up on, on maybe in the bathroom or, or someplace in your house that if you struggle with fear of your finances, Put that on a note card and, or notepad and set it up where your eyes are going to see it. Put it at the right level. When you walk past it, your eyes are going to catch that. And uh, when, uh, when I had my office over where it's now it's Jeremy and, uh, and Annas, the whole wall was plastered with these notes. I'd sit there and my eyes would come upon these notes and they're always an encouragement to me. God wants his word to become the encouragement that will carry you through each day. My God shall supply all your need. And how about when perhaps you or someone you love is battling with sickness? I am the Lord thy God who healeth thee. 
Oh, aren't you glad for that? And you can go scripture after scripture, and as you're reading that scripture, you're looking for answers. You're not just trying to cover a chapter or two chapters. You're looking for answers to what you're facing today. And God will bring those scriptures out to you. These are promises that are eternal. God's word will never return void. And so you can read his word. And as you're reading that word, you're saying, this is God saying it. And so it's going to happen. I can trust it. You know, I, I love... I love when there's children in church. And uh, just think, in a troubled world, God's got a ton of promises that we can rejoice in their future. He's going to take care of them. I could preach for hours just telling you the answers to prayer. Now God has worked miracle after miracle. I could tell you about all the little children we have seen God heal. Can I tell you one story? And that was the first time we prayed for anyone to be healed. And the one we prayed for was a baby. Just a little baby. And uh, we had a service in this particular church and the lady came up, a good couple came up carrying this little baby boy. And they said, look into his eye. And one of, this, one of the eyes of this baby had a spot on it, a dark spot. And it wasn't supposed to be there. And this couple said, the doctors have told us that if that spot begins to grow, to rush him in to the hospital immediately, and that I would have to be removed, or the baby's going to die. And that's frightening. And they said, would you pray for him? Well, the only the Bible says, if there's any sick among you, they call for the elders of the church. And, well, they call for us. And, and they said to anoint with oil. We didn't have any oil. Well, my sister-in-law had some oil, baby oil. It's a baby. We anointed this little baby boy with baby oil. And... Uh, and so we prayed, just a simple prayer. And we went over to my sister, said where we were staying at the time. And a couple of hours later, we get a phone call. And it was this couple. And they said, you know that spot in my baby's eye? I said, yeah. It's about half as big as it was. It's not getting bigger, it's getting smaller. The next morning they called again. They said, you know that spot in my baby's eyes? Yeah. It's gone. It's totally gone. Well, now that baby is in his 40s. The spot never came back. And you see, no matter what the problem you will find in your life, You'll find in God's word, there's a solution. And that's why as we, he says to let the word of Christ dwell in you, it's, it's going into that word and accepting God's promise for you and believing it and rejoicing in it. This is a day in which many people are living in fear. I'm happy to tell you, 
we've got a great big God who loves you. And he wants you to do like little Cassandra did this morning. She came running to Grandpa, curled up in my arms, and just stayed there. And that's what God wants you to do. To curl up into his arms today. Cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Some of you are carrying some pretty heavy things today. Frightening things because they're things you cannot control. Loved ones, very sick. There's things that they're mountains. But God still removes mountains. He says, trust me. Trust me. Let's pray. Father, we ask this morning, Lord, that you would give us that faith to rest in you. That instead of dwelling on the problems, we will dwell upon you. And when Satan tries to scare the life out of us, we run to you who is our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, this morning for the hope that is within us because we believe your word. And so, Lord, we thank and praise you for that. Draw us to you that we will just get nearer and nearer until we're just cuddling up with you, Jesus. But we ask it in your name. Amen. We're going to turn our hymn book, number 485, 485. Thank you. 
But you can only be a friend to those who have opened up their heart to you. And Lord, we just pray this morning, if there's anybody that's watching this telecast today, anyone, Lord, who has never asked you to be their Savior, Lord, God, we pray that today would be the day. They would just cry out to you and look, Lord, I'm scared. I, I, I'm, this world is falling all apart. I don't know where to turn. I'm turning to you because I need peace in my heart. Lord, would you come in and be my Savior and my Lord today. By faith, I receive you into my heart. Thank you, Lord, for each one as you come to here today. Pray your blessing upon each one. May this week be a week of great blessing. Even because we've been in the house of the Lord this morning. Lord, fill our hearts and our minds with your peace, with your joy. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures, fear below. Praise Him upon the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. God bless you.